Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Pro Hamas? How about protest Hamas? OPP's mega fail, Mountain Dew or Mountain Don't? Boom, what do we got today? Let's go ahead and dive right in. Where are the anti-Hamas protests? Why is everyone promoting Palestine in the guise of actually promoting a terrorist organization? Why does the world accept the rape, torture, and slaughter of Jews? Well, let's find out. Everyone is cheering the frat boys in pastel-colored blouses and shorts for saving the flag in an anti-Israel protest at UNC Chapel Hill. People donated almost half a million bucks to see the Greeks uh, celebrate with a rager. Instapundit linked a tweet to a video of another frat boy confrontation at LSU. The tweet said, all they had to do was not mess with our flag. Really? That's all the Hamas supporters had to do? My fact checked is that this is sadly true. The support of terrorism was not the concern of most people. What upset them was taking down our flag. The calls for the obliteration of Israel and the extermination of all Jews do not bother most people. Americans today are too comfortable with the destruction caused by terrorists. Pushing little old ladies into oncoming subway trains no longer outrages Americans. A dozen more black men are gunned down each day, but it only matters if a policeman holds the gun. Desensitization? Conditioning? Hamas has taken Americans hostage. Where is the pathetic housewife Michelle Obama with her duck bill pout and hashtag sign? Remember Politico reported 10 Mays ago when international outrage over the kidnapping more than 200 Nigerian girls reached fever pitch last week? The Obama administration's most headline-grabbing public condemnation didn't come from the Oval Office, the State Department, or the Pentagon, but from an unlikelier address, the East Wing, with the unusual emergence of Michelle Obama. Bring back our girls. Very politically motivated tweet. Nigerian lives matter. Americans don't unless they're black and shot by a cop. Where's Alyssa Milano? Remember, NBC reported nearly six years ago on the afternoon of October 15th, 2017, the actress Alyssa Milano tweeted a request to her followers. If you've been sexually harassed or assaulted, write me too as a reply to this tweet. The results were overwhelming. It was a movement. Within 24 hours, her post generated thousands of replies, comments, and retweets and inspired thousands more original posts on social media with women and men from around the world sharing personal stories. Among the celebrities who responded were Lady Gaga, Viola Davis, Javier Munoz, Evan Rachel Wood. Did Me Too only apply to celebrities? Did Believe All Women cover all only those with a SAG or AFTRA card? Was it just another country club that keeps Jews out? Ask Kamala about that one. And how about those Handmaid's Tale protesters? Where are they now? Remember the Boston Globe reported two Mays ago, abortion rights protesters led by women dressed as handmaids gather at State House. Their tale is the same. Insert name of Republican is going to force women to give birth to babies they don't want. Oh, good Lord, we shouldn't have had sex. And don't say it's all rape and uh, abuse from your father because it's less than 1%. That never happens, but what actually happened in Israel was horrific. Palestinians raped hundreds of women on October 7th. Where's the outcry? Do you know of the survivors? 40 out of like the 50 survivors have committed suicide because of the atrocities that they witnessed and endured during that October 7th onslaught. Over the decades, the media has villainized Israel. Decades of AP shielding Palestinian terrorists have worked. AP's offices in Gaza City protected a Palestinian military headquarters from Israeli counterattacks. AP used Palestinian propagandists as reporters and photographers. Victims of the latest horrific attack are suing AP. I hope they get trillions and bankrupt the terrorist news organization. When you sleep with terrorists, you become one. Let us review. On October 7th, hundreds of Palestinian soldiers in civilian attire launched 5,000 rockets and attacked Jewish civilians in Israel. The soldiers raped hundreds of women. They tortured people. They murdered people. They mutilated their bodies. They put babies in ovens. A world that 
said never again in reaction to the industrialized genocide of Jews by Nazis in World War II, yawned to this barbaric and savage attack. NBC said Israel was plunged into chaos Saturday after Palestinian militant group Hamas launched a deadly land, air, and sea attack inside the country, with fighters infiltrating the southern border and firing a massive barrage of rockets from the Gaza Strip. We are in a war, Israeli PM Benjamin Netanyahu declared in a video on social media. He ordered strikes on Gaza and called for an extensive reserve mobilization. Over 200 Israels have been killed and more than 1,200 injured, a spokesperson for the IDF stated the palestinian ministry of health in gaza said sunday that 313 people were killed including 20 children and about 1990 were injured palestinians cheered the attack just as they did on 9 11. so anyway blah 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 where's the outrage everyone's like you guys are going in there and killing all these gazan children well guess what the gazans the palestinians have a government that they follow and support called Hamas. They're a terrorist organization. They had one election and they haven't had one since for many different reasons. And the truth is that they don't want to lose power. These people are monsters. You're supporting a group of people that are being run by monsters. Hence, you're supporting a group of monsters. Okay? For anyone who doubts the campus protests support Hamas, George Washington University, Gaza Encampment Project's projects flames onto the American flag with the message, Gaza lights the spark that will set the empire ablaze. So yeah, there you have it. Let's just go ahead and have a quick look at that. Gaza lights the spark that will set the empire ablaze. And what is the empire? The empire is the United States of America. And these people hate America. They hate what they've been given. They're biting the hand that feeds them. Every opportunity they've ever had in life came from being born in America. Period. If you're born over there in Palestine and you're of the uh, rainbow alternative, then guess what, people? You go to jail. 15 years mandatory minimum for homosexuality. But gays for Palestine, oh yeah, slay. Hamas in a Toyota truck, of course, patrolling Khan Yunus Beach, shoots citizens caught stealing from Hamas humanitarian aid warehouses. Okay, so let's just go ahead and have a look at this. This is your Hamas, people. This is your Palestine, okay? We had some people here who are starving hungry because of what's going on. And uh, Hamas, the terrorist government organization, instead of arresting them or stopping them, apprehending them, they decided they were going to gun them down, okay? And then you can see them driving away there. Let's go ahead and have a look at the, uh, the other video here. There you have it, people. There's your uh, Palestine government there, just totally annihilating anyone who's attempting to get humanitarian aid. Yeah, okay, so good job. Let's go ahead and keep promoting this terrorist organization. And uh, this is not satire. This is comedy gold from the Princeton hunger strike. If you're unaware, a lot of these students have decided to go on a hunger strike to show their allegiance to Hamas, the terrorists. Let's go ahead and have a listen. Us as strikers, we will continue to starve until they meet our demands. In addition, I would like to note that the administration is also lying to the media. To the, me to the media, they have announced that they have been consistently sending their own doctors to come to our area and monitor us hunger strikers and monitor our health, this is a lie. They are not, they are not monitoring our health. 
They are not keeping track of our vitals. They are not at all taking care of us in any regard. They have only sent a spokesperson from UHS twice to give us informational pamphlets, but they are not at all, at all, taking care of us in any regard, and I want to make that very clear, that they are not caring for us, that they do not care for us, and they are lying. Oh my gosh. I mean, they're not taking care of us. We're on a hunger strike here. We're not eating any food. What? Oh my God. So anyway, comedy gold. There you have a whinger just complaining about everything in life and how good she has it. And uh, she's a terrorist supporter. All right. Hilarious scene from Case Western Reserve. Contractor hired to paint over a vandalized wall is met by Hamas cosplayers who later call the police and claim assault. All right. Well, what the heck is going on here? Students assaulted by contractors at CWRU. Students get covered in paint. Of course, they're totally prepared. So anyway, you can see what's going on there. Basically, these people are standing up for a cause. They have no idea what they believe in. They're trying to prevent someone from covering over some uh, graffiti there. What a joke, okay? I mean, there's a better way to stand up for what you believe in. It's called join the military and fight for your country, okay? Not fight for another country that's run by a bunch of terrorists. All right. Dutch police use bulldozers to destroy Hamas encampment at the University of Amsterdam. After violence we saw yesterday, this needed to be done. So yeah, over in Amsterdam, uh, there's a whole bunch of violence. The uh, liberals were going wild over there promoting this terrorist organization. Let's tune in. So yeah, they're not playing over there at all whatsoever they're just going to go ahead and tear it down and so be it when you uh get involved with something you have no understanding of what you're promoting and then you start promoting violence guess what the authority will come down on you and uh, joe biden's losing celebrities and they're turning to trump excellent mashup let's go ahead and tune in on this because a lot of these people are very outspoken against Donald Trump now, and it seems like they're waking up to the reality of Bidenomics. Voting for Trump is on the table. People are like, what are you talking about? That's my reality. Well, I would vote for Trump before I'd vote for Biden. Just because the thing with Biden, like, he's no, he's, he's gone. The endorsement that I made uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. Am I going to do that again this year? That answer is no. Schools, library, uh police safety and sanitation yeah joe biden's talking about like yeah we could fund two wars we could fund two wars my stoop told the sunday times donald trump question mark he ain't done nothing wrong to me he has only done great things for me he pardoned michael harris i have nothing but love and respect for donald trump voting for boom there you go so you got stephen a smith there big enough uh, Snoop Dogg for his endorsement of Donald Trump. You got Michael Raff, whatever this guy's name is. I can't remember. He's a B, he's a B actor. And uh, he's very outspoken. He's all over the internet calling Trump a loser and stuff. And guess what? It's on the table now. Because he realizes that Biden's a loser. And guess what? Missing Stephenville trucker, truck driver found dead, say Ontario Provincial Police. So Stephenville is a small town in Newfoundland and Labrador on the east coast of Canada. And the individual, Brian Lush, he's been missing for two weeks. And God rest his soul. I'm sure his family are very concerned, or were, until they received the news on Monday. Uh, very, very sad and unfortunate event here. So the missing truck driver, Brian Lush, has been found dead, according to OPP, in a news release issued Monday evening. No other details will be released. Interesting. Um, so how did the OPP screw this up? Well, guess what? They uh, found the body in his truck after they released it back to the moving company in Newfoundland. 
Okay, what the heck? The remains of Newfoundland trucker who went missing in Ontario two weeks ago were found in the back of his truck's trailer in his home province, even though his rig was a key piece of evidence in the search in the place where he was last seen. The OPP confirmed Tuesday, after their press release Monday, that he had been found with no other details. Well, they confirmed on Tuesday that, yeah, he was found inside his trailer in Port of Basque, Newfoundland, basically where the ferry uh, port is after its return from Ontario. So he spent two weeks in the back of his trailer in a gas station. The OPP go ahead and they gather the evidence. They search the vehicle for uh, Lush. And guess what? No sign of him. And as soon as they get it back in Newfoundland, the crack RCMP team probably, uh, you know, smelt an odor, perhaps. Anyway, Lush, who lived in western Newfoundland, town Steve Mill, has last been seen close to his truck in Summerstown, Ontario, on April 24th on his way home to Newfoundland. The OPP refused to answer questions from CBC News about whether police thoroughly searched the truck and trailer before sending it back to the truck's owner in Newfoundland. And if so, how investigators could have missed the remains inside. Yeah. I mean, if he's on his way back, the truck was probably empty. He might have been covered up in a blanket. Maybe he was taking a nap back there and unfortunately passed in his sleep. They said there's no foul play. OPP came out and said that. How do they even know? What a joke. Absolutely. And we'll pray for the Lush family and uh, the soul of Brian there. God rest your soul. All right. So the meme war is on. Joe Biden here uh, looks like he's a child. Let's go ahead and see exactly what they did with this mashup. Have you ever had a dream that, that you, um, you had, you, you, you could you do, you, you want, you, you could do so, you, you do, you could, you, you want, you want him to do you so much, you could do anything. And it's funny because that's literally how that old guy talks. He is completely lost. Just as Joe Rogan said, he's not there anymore. So this is a meme war. It's obviously not Joe Biden. It's a piss take on him basically behaving like a child and having the intelligence of one. A boy beat me in track and sexually harassed me. Biden thinks I'm the problem. Yeah, Title IX says that because all of these people, these alternatives, need to be included and they need to be uh, coddled and comforted because their emotions are so fragile. Girls shouldn't lose their sports in track, spots in track, to boys just because Biden rewrites Title IX. All right. I started participating in sports at an early age and have been active my whole life. I've tried most sports available in my area, like soccer, swimming, cheer, dance, gymnastics, running, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It's what I love, but something I love has turned into a source of pain. When I was in seventh grade, I joined my middle school track team to compete in throwing events, just like my parents did. But that same year, a sixth grade boy, known in court documents as BPJ, joined the girls team. BPJ identifies as a girl. I was forced to unfairly compete against and use the same locker room as BPJ. In my 8th grade year, BPJ started making extremely inappropriate comments to me and the other girls that made me very uncomfortable. In any other situation, I would report the comments to my school immediately, but since BPJ identifies as transgender, I was worried about labeled as transphobic and it would make things awkward on my team, so I didn't say anything and tried to stay as far away from BPJ as possible. There you go. You don't want a conflict, you avoid it. Fair enough. But yeah, you should have stood up immediately and expressed how you felt. 100%. Always. Be truthful and expressive. It didn't work. I eventually told my parents about the sexual harassment. We reported it to my school administrators. But the school didn't tell a thing to change things or help me. Yeah. To make matters deep. Because they felt the same way. They were like, ooh, this is sticky. Don't want to put my hands in that. To make matters even worse, I started losing to BPJ repeatedly. Everyone knows boys are naturally bigger, stronger, and more muscular than girls. It's scientifically clear, yes. That's why there are girls-only categories in sports. And historically, have always been that way. Just look at the world records for track, for swimming, for anything. It's miles apart. M seconds, not milliseconds. It's like literally like full body lengths. On the track team, I competed in shot put, discus, pole vault, and the 100 meter dash, and the 4x100. I also filled in whenever they needed me. I loved it. But things kept getting worse in April 2023 because BPJ was competing on the girls team. I was left out of one of the comp competitions for the throwing events, which I had been competing in for two seasons. For most meets, the athletes 
with the three best personal records compete in each championship event. BPJ had already replaced me in the shot put top three, but I was still in the top three for discus until the mid-Mountain 10 meets towards the end of the season. The whole season, BPJ had been physically changing, getting taller, shoulders broadening, voice getting deeper as a male hitting puberty does. My coach pulled me aside before the mid-Mountain 10 meet and informed me that I'd been knocked out of the throwing competition. BPJ, a male almost two years younger than me, had officially replaced me, a female, on the girls' throwing team in the meet. Unbelievable. So is he not on puberty blockers? What's the deal? He's going through puberty. What's the deal? On top of all that, BPJ rubbed it in my face, made me feel inferior, and trash-talked me for not throwing as far. In short, BPJ belittled me. Yeah, so the dude's a jerk. He's stealing trophies. He's stealing merit from all these people. He is uh, what the definition of a loser would be because winners don't act like that. He's a trans loser, and he shouldn't be allowed to play. Not on the girls' team, especially with unsportsmanlike behavior like that and giant muscular man shoulders it's all a joke okay it's absolute joke everybody knows that boys are stronger taller faster than girls there's no equality in physicality even with puberty blockers get out of here with it all right mountain dew or mountain don't common u.s foods that are banned in other countries well why not here consumers in the united states put their trust in organizations such as the Food and Drug Administration and the Department of Agriculture to keep packaged food, fish, and livestock production safe. But to what standards? Hmm? The lobbyists in Washington who are like, oh, Mountain Dew, we must have that on the shelves. It's been a staple in the teens' diets and blah, blah. We'll enrich it with something and iron and we'll take sugar out. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, many American food additives think flame retardants and suspected carcinogens and production standards that have been approved domestically are banned or strictly regulated abroad. This is all in addition to U.S.'s liberal policies on genetically modified organisms, which are more restricted or banned outright in other countries as well. So how and why? Because lobby groups, groups hired by these companies to go to Washington and scratch backs and reach around and give people hugs and uh, get their products on the shelves and approved. So we got a list, uh, discover 30 everyday American food products with ingredients that are banned. Mountain Dew, citrus flavored soft drink used brominated vegetable oil as an emulsifier. BVO is banned in Japan and the European Union because it contains bromine, the element found in brominated flame retardants which can build up in the body and potentially lead to memory loss as well as skin and nerve problems. There's other things about Mountain Dew. Look it up, people. Little Debbie Swiss Rolls, popular dessert in the United States, contains food dyes yellow and red 40. While they now are permitted in the European Union, they have to carry warnings that they can cause adverse effects in children. They're also banned in foods for infants and young children. These are not foods, okay? They're banned in things you can eat, but it's not food. Food offers nutritional value. No such warning is required domestically. Norway and Austria have banned the chocolate treats outright. Good job. Frosted flakes, honey bunches of oats, rice krispies. These popular breakfast cereals contain BHT, a flavor enhancer, which has long been studied for its potential carcinogenic properties. The evidence is inconclusive. It is banned in Japan and the European Union. There is chloramaquat as well in a lot of these oat products, even organic oat products, that causes all kinds of sterilization issues. Coffee mate, trans fats, like the partially hydrogenated soybean and cottonseed oils in Coffee Mate are linked to heart disease and were officially banned in the U.S. as of June 18, 2018. However, they still linger in the U.S. food supply. There are also mandatory limits on trans fats in other countries such as Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, Iceland, Norway, and Denmark. Stovetop stuffing. Uh-oh. You can make stuffing in just five minutes with this popular craft product, but the mix contains preservatives BHA and BHT, which are suspected to be carcinogenic and to impair blood clotting. This has caused these preservatives to be banned in the new K, Japan, and several European countries. Drumstick frozen desserts. Drumsticks uses carrageenan for texture in its ice cream, but the additive is derived from seaweed, can affect the human digestive system. The adverse effects have caused the European Union to limit its products in food like baby food. Also, just go ahead and go YouTube drumstick that doesn't melt. What the heck is in that ice cream? Certainly not ice. Skittles. When consumers are tasting the rainbow of this popular candy, they are also ingesting food dyes yellow five, six, and red 40. These dyes have been known to have adverse effects on young children. 
They are banned in foods for infants in the European Union. Foods that contain the dyes must carry a warning label. Norway and Austria ban them completely. Wheat thins. To add freshness to a package, wheat thins Nabisco adds BHT. Already mentioned, Gatorade. This sports drink claims to replenish electrolytes, but also contains food dyes yellow and yellow, yellow 5 and 6. Banned in infants, obviously. Pop-Tarts. Yellow 5 and 6. Red 40. More colors. Farmer John pork. Breakfast sausage links. That one has BHT in it. More cancer for you there. Uh, this colorful breakfast cereal, Lucky Charms, gets its rainbow hue by additives yellow 5, yellow 6, red 40. Boom. More and more. Tostitos salsa con queso. That's the cheese dip. They also have yellow 5 and 6, obviously, how they make get that cheesy color. Well, it's not real cheese, so they use dye. Ritz crackers. Nabisco's Ritz is among the leading cracker brands in the U.S. Its namesake cracker contains partially hydrogenated cottonseed oil, which is a trans fat that's currently banned domestically and is limited in many other countries. Fresca, grapefruit-flavored citrus drink manufactured by Coca-Cola, contains flame-retardant bromine to prevent the separation of ingredients. BVO is banned in Europe, and it's found in Mountain Dew. Pillsbury Biscuits, the doughboy, poisoning people. Um, what do they got in there? Trans fats, boom. Sunkissed Soda. Has red dye, 40, yellow, 6. Betty Crocker fudge brownie mix. Got some trans fats all up in there as well. Yeah. Pillsbury pie crust. BHT, BHA. Raspberry jello. Got some color in that, obviously. Red 40. Doritos light. Well, they have Olestra. It's a fat substitute. Gives you massive amounts of diarrhea. Arby's sourdough breakfast bread croissant and French toast sticks. Yeah, well, guess what? I'm sure those are all delicious for you. They have whitening agent inside. Great. Azodicarbonamid. Whatever. Genetically engineered papaya. High fructose corn syrup. You can imagine all these things are super bad. Farm raised salmon. Absolutely horrible for you. And most salmon is if it's fresh salmon. It has to say wild caught. If it doesn't say wild caught, it's farmed. Okay? And they call it fresh. Farm fresh. And it is full of antibiotics. They dye that thing pink because it's gray meat. Anyway, chicken that's been chlorinated. Yeah, so what do they do? They just go ahead and spray it with chlorine. They pump it with water to get it fatter. Meat with ractopamin. What the heck is that? Farmers use ractopamin to increase lean muscle growth in livestock. So it's like a steroid or something. It's been banned in the European Union, Russia, and China. But not in America. Go ahead. Bread tainted with potassium bromate. Dairy with RBST and RBGH hormones. Yeah, getting those cows all thick. So here's the deal, people. All of the food that you're consuming is not food, okay? Even the vegetables and fruits, they're all genetically modified. They're sprayed with insecticide, pesticides, whatever. They're genetically modified to be able to grow better and resist things. We're not eating food, people. Cancer's exploding everywhere. It's all in the gut area. What could it be? I don't know. What do you think? Sigma Tiger, signing out.